So today we begin lecture 38 on helicopter dynamics and today we are going to look at momentum theory in climb. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we saw that when we are performing any preliminary design for a typical rotor, the power required for hanging in the air is a very basic requirement. So that's the our power. Now, sometimes the vehicle has to climb, and so this is going to require more power than just to hover in the air. And so we need to calculate the climb power, and this may create a situation where we actually need to account for a higher level of power than just predicted to hover the vehicle. So that's why climb power becomes important. And here we are talking of vertical climb. Now, momentum theory can be used to get a good estimate about power required for climbing flight. And again, just like before, there are a number of assumptions which are made in simple momentum theory for climbing flight, which you need to keep in mind whenever you are using the results which come out of this climbing flight calculation. So let's now create the flow field for the rotor climbing vertically. So you have your rotor here. It's essentially moving vertically up. And since the rotor is moving vertically up, there is now a climb velocity, capital V, of air here. This air goes through the rotor disc and acquires an extra velocity small v. So through the rotor disc the velocity is capital V plus small v, capital V being the climb velocity and small v being the induced velocity at the rotor disc. Then far down in the wake the velocity is going to be capital V plus small w and this small w is the velocity in the far wake. Now remember if v is not zero, that's the climb velocity is not zero, then this small v and w are not going to be the same as what is obtained in the hover condition. So these are different numbers, so keep that in mind. Here, whenever we are going to refer to the hover condition, we are going to put a subscript h on v. So that's how we are going to differentiate between the v in climb and the v in the hover condition. So what do we presume in this momentum theory? Again, we have actuator disk. We have a uniform loading on the rotor disk. We have well-defined and smooth slipstream. The induced velocity is uniform across the rotor disk. There is no rotation in the slipstream. The fluid is invisit and incompressible. And as I mentioned before, the invisit part is an assumption we make in momentum theory, which is not good. So we are going to fix this by using a different theory for predicting profile drag later. But right now, just remember that this approximation is made here. So the profile drag is not going to get calculated. We can also say that incompressible is true because the climb velocity of a typical rotor is very small. So let's go to the equations now. Now the mass flux is going to be m dot is rho a v plus v. So that's the mass which is going through the rotor disk. The momentum conservation is going to give us T equals m dot v plus w minus m dot v. So remember v plus w is the velocity in the far wake now and v is the velocity way on top of the rotor. Okay, so when we subtract that, we get the same equation as before, that is m dot w because these v terms cancel out. Okay, so still we get the equation T is m dot w. Now we look at the energy conservation. And again, the work done is going to be thrust into the velocity at the rotor disk. And this is half m dot into 
the velocity in the far wake square minus half m dot the velocity far up on the rotor square okay and then we reduce this by squaring and so on and subtracting and so we get a term involving 2 vw and then another term involving w square the v square term cancels out and so we get this equation here but i've taken the w out here so i get half m dot w into w plus 2v okay so that's the equation i get here so now i write these two equations this is what we derived in the previous slide and this is what we obtained before for the trust and then i calculate t by m dot from both these equations so the momentum equation gives us t by m dot is w and this is going to be same as the t by m dot calculated from the equation here that's going to be w w plus 2 v this term by 2 into v plus v this term here okay so now we just look at this equation which involves w v and small v and so we take this out we expand this equation and we get the equation here so we get 2 w into v plus v here and then right hand side is this term now looking closely you can clearly see here that there is a cancellation of the 2 w v term on both sides and so what's left is w square and 2 w small v and then there is a further can cancellation of the w and so finally we end up with w equals 2 v very interesting so the induced velocity in climb is the same in terms of expression as was obtained in the hover condition and it is twice in the far wake compared to what is there at the rotor disk and it's quite remarkable that the presence of climb velocity does not change the fact you can in fact go at the derivation and see why that is so now also the total pressure in the wake at station 3 you can get by this calculation so that's the ambient pressure plus half rho v plus w square and so this is going to be equal to this value here so now we are going to look at how to find the induced velocity in climb and therefore we can then get some expression for the induced power so let's start with t equals m dot w and that's going to be rho a v plus v into 2v so now we just calculated w was 2v and we know the mass flux is rho a into the velocity going through the rotor disk that's v plus v we also know the our value of induced velocity that was v h equals root t by 2 rho a so i can write here v h square would be t by 2 rho a and i compare it with the equation here that predicts to me that t by 2 rho a is going to be v plus v into v okay now in this equation keep in mind that the small v is the induced velocity in climb the capital v is the climb velocity and then we can write the equation here as a quadratic Okay. now this quadratic equation is very useful because we can clearly see that if you are actually in a climb situation you know capital v and you would also know vh because vh can be very easily calculated by the formula given in the previous expression if you know t and a and rho which you do so we can solve this quadratic for two solutions but what is of interest to us is the positive value here because this value should be positive because you are climbing up so the velocity is going through the rotor disk downward as we have assumed so now here you can clearly see that the term in the square root is going to be larger than v by 2 and therefore 
this is going to be a positive term. So this is the root which is of physical interest to us. So we have considered the positive value of the root in the equation here. And another thing you will clearly notice is that the climb velocity reduces the induced velocity. So that is something you can clearly see here. Now, once you have calculated the induced velocity in climb, you can calculate the induced and climb power loss. And remember, velocity in the far wake is V plus W or V plus 2V. So the induced power is going to be the thrust into V plus V, which is the velocity through the rotor disc. And so I can write this as this expression here, okay, where I just add V to this small V and therefore the minus term becomes a plus term here. The minus V by two has become V by two. So this is the expression. Now, generally using this expression, you can calculate the induced power because you would have access to the velocity of climb, say it is two meter per second, then you put that in here, you calculate VH put in, in here, you know the thrust, the thrust is going to be equal to the weight here, and therefore you can calculate the climb power. If you were to put capital V equal to zero, this would essentially degener degenerate into the hour equation. That, mean, that means it is going to be T into VH. Now, some extreme cases, let us look at that. If V is much greater than small V, then the power reduces to T V plus V, okay? So this almost becomes T V, that is the pure climb power. The second case is if V is much smaller than V H, and this is generally true for most helicopter rotors. In that case, the power is given by this formula, it reduces to this formula here, okay? So I can then say this is pH plus half T into V. So these are some calculations you can make for the special cases, but I would recommend it's always better to just use the complete expression in terms of the climb power. So this is going to give you the power required to climb and in general this is going to be greater than the power required to hover and uh, if you have been specified a certain requirement of climb by the people who want this vehicle to be desired to be designed then you can choose that particular value and you can calculate the power required to climb and that induced power will act as a higher bound in case of the vertical flight for this problem. So I will end this lecture here. I will see you in my next video.